In this video, we're going to talk about money, and we're especially going to concern ourselves with interest, and we're going to go through some ideas about interest in this video, and then we will work through some problems in another video. So interest can be thought of as the time price of money. If I ask you what is the price of money, that seems sort of strange because we're used to denoting prices in terms of money. But if I let you borrow some money now, I want you to pay me back some money later. How much money do I want you to pay me back later? Well, it's going to depend on how long you're borrowing the money, and that's how interest gets this name of the time price of money. So there's two different types of interest, real and nominal. And what we're used to seeing is the nominal interest rate. The bank has a sign up, it says 8% interest. That might be a bit optimistic. But the nominal rate is broken down into the real rate and inflation. So this isn't a macro class, but the idea behind inflation is that prices will rise over time. So suppose that I lend you $100 today at an 8% nominal interest rate. Well, if the rate of inflation is 5%, that means that next year prices will be 5% higher. And we know that higher prices lower my real income. All right, remember back to the real income effect and the substitution effect. So actually what's going on is the real rate of interest is only 3% because over here I have this nominal rate at 8% and I have the inflation rate of 5%, so we could just solve this equation and find out that the real rate equals 3%. Okay. What interest does is it allocates capital to more productive uses. And what I mean by that is if a business has an idea for a project, it wants to develop something new. It will take out a loan if it can get the loan at a cheaper rate than the return it expects to get. So for instance, if the nominal rate is 8% and the firm thinks that they can earn a nominal return of 10%, it's worthwhile to borrow the money because they would still come out ahead. Their project would earn them 10%, they would have to pay back 8% interest on the loan, and so they would still be up by about 2%. However, if their project was only expected to yield 7%, then they would not want to take out the loan. So what that does is it encourages good projects that have a higher expected return to happen, while worse projects that have a lower expected rate of return won't happen. The last thing that we are going to use interest for is to compare the values of future streams of income. Let's take a brief detour to talk about an interesting aspect of interest. So if you are a saver, you have a savings account, you can earn interest on the money that you have in the account this year. And then next year, you earn money not only on your initial deposit, but also you earn interest on the interest that you earned last year, and so on. This is called compound interest. And over a period of many years, the interest on your interest can be quite substantial. So we said that we could use the interest rate to compare future streams of income. So here are two examples. Right? What if we had $100 next year? How much is that worth today? All right, if I offered to pay you $100 next year or some amount today, how much would you take today? Well, that partially depends on the interest rate, and we'll see why. You can imagine if I would pay you $100 two years from now, that wouldn't be as valuable as $100 one year from now. And in fact, $100 today would be worth even more than having it in a year or two years. So we know that uh, this equation is the present value equation. PV stands for present value. And we know that the present value of $100 today is $100. These Ds stand for the payment. All right, so here it's this would be $100 a year from now, another $100 two years from now, etc. This I stands for the interest rate. So what we have to do is this is called discounting, where we're going to take the value 
of our payment a year from now, divide it by one plus the interest rate, and that will tell us how much money it's worth today. So that's sort of backwards from how you're used to thinking about it. What you've probably done in the past is you know that you have a certain amount of money today, and you want to figure out if you stick it in the bank, how much money would it be worth in one year? All right, so you can see that is basically just this part of the equation where you know what, how much money you have today and you know what the interest rate is and you just solve for how much it will be worth one year from now. All right, so what we can do is work this same equation backwards to determine how much a payment in the future would be worth in today's terms. So let's work through an example. Here we're going to assume that we're paid the same payment every year. So this D stands for dividend. So it's fairly common for say a stock to pay you a dividend that is fairly constant over time. So if the dividend is constant over time, let's also use the assumption that the interest rate is constant over time. Once again, this is a simplifying assumption because we're in an introductory class. But there's a nice little math trick that says that if D is the same and I is the same, then we can calculate the present value as PV equals D divided by I. So we'll see an example of that Imagine that we have $10 every year forever coming to us, okay? So D1, $10 next year, $10 in two years, $10 however many years from now. So the value of that is $80 if the interest rate is 12.5%. So we just take the $10 divided by the interest rate. Notice this is not one plus the interest rate, right? Here we only have I, it's just I. In this formula, we have one plus I, so be careful with that. However, if the interest rate goes down to 5%, then the present value actually goes up. All right, with a lower interest rate, the present value is higher. Why does that happen? Well, basically, with a higher interest rate, you are making the denominator bigger, which would make this entire fraction smaller. In the next video, we will work through examples of how this formula can be applied.